99% of developers don't get proxies. Perhaps when you're back in elementary school trying to play Bloons Tower Defense 3 and couldn't get past your school's website blocking so you decided to use a proxy to get around it. Then you proceeded to spend your entire lunch break trying to get as many banana farms as possible. But imagine using proxies all the time and not knowing how they work. You hear the word proxy and you probably think of hiding your IP address to watch geoblocked shows on Netflix. Perhaps the new hottest season of Love Island. But what if I told you that that's just the tip of the iceberg? Proxy are invisible gatekeepers of the internet, but are they protecting you or controlling you? They're one of the most powerful and dangerous tools on the internet, but in this video we're diving deep into the world of proxies to show you how they work from a more technical standpoint. So what is a proxy? A proxy server is an intermediary that acts as a gateway between your device, the client, and the wider internet, or the server. When you attempt to access a website or web service, your request is not sent directly to the destination. Instead, it is first routed to the proxy. The proxy then either forwards that request to the destination server on your behalf, or handles it internally if the content has been cached. Once the proxy receives a response from the destination, it sends that data back to you. From the server's perspective, the request appears to originate from the proxy rather than from you directly. This redirection allows the proxy to apply rules, rewrite requests, anonymize the client, cache content, monitor activity, or perform other network functions that would otherwise be unavailable to the client or server alone. Why even use a proxy? There's so many reasons why people and organizations use proxies. It provides anonymity and privacy. A proxy hides your IP address, making your activity harder to trace. For users who want to browse anonymously, avoid targeted tracking, or appear as if they are located in a different country, a proxy is very valuable. Organizations use proxies to filter outgoing and incoming content. Proxies can block access to malware sites, enforce usage policies, for example, no social media at work, or prevent users from uploading sensitive data to the internet. It can also bypass geo-restrictions and censorship. Proxies can make it appear as though your traffic originates from a different location, allowing access to region-locked content. For example, Netflix shows, news sites blocked in certain countries, etc. They help bypass censorship in restrictive regimes. Another one is load balancing and SSL offloading. In server-side use, proxies can distribute incoming traffic across a fleet of backend servers to improve scalability and reliability. They can also terminate SSL connections, which I'll explain later, reducing overhead on application servers. But you've probably heard of this concept of forward versus reverse proxies. But what does this mean? A forward proxy sits between clients or users and the internet. The client knows about the proxy and explicitly sends traffic to it. This is the standard model for personal or organizational use. Filtering, privacy, caching, and anonymity all fall under forward proxy use. A reverse proxy, by contrast, sits in front of servers and acts as a gatekeeper for requests coming in from users on the internet. Users do not know the reverse proxy exists. They think they are talking directly to the server, but in reality, the reverse proxy receives the request, forwards it to the appropriate backend server, receives the response, and sends it back to the client. For example, if you visit store.example.com, your request might hit an Nginx reverse proxy hosted at the domain. Nginx checks the path and routes it to the appropriate microservice, perhaps a product catalog backend or a payment gateway. The backend service may be hosted on a private network and not exposed to the internet directly. From the client's perspective, they're only talking to store.example.com, but in reality, Nginx is orchestrating all communication behind the scenes. Now back to SSL termination. A very common function of reverse proxies is SSL termination. This means the proxy is responsible for handling the TLS handshake and decrypting incoming HTTPS traffic. Once the proxy decrypts the request, it can inspect or modify it before forwarding it to internal servers over plain HTTP. This is very powerful because it reduces the CPU overhead on backend servers, centralizes SSL certificate management, and enables logging and access control at the proxy layer. And talking about proxy servers, thank you to Decodo for sponsoring this video, the most efficient and powerful way to access and automate web data collection. Decodo, formerly known as Smart Proxy, is a powerful developer-friendly platform that enables you to extract, automate, and scale web data collection using residential proxies, custom scraping scripts, or their universal scraping API. Whether you're a software engineer, product lead, data analyst, or building a data-intensive web business, Decodo offers an all-in-one solution that dramatically simplifies the way you collect and operationalize data from the public web. Decodo makes it incredibly easy to get started. Every product comes with a free trial, three days and 100 megabytes of usage for proxy products, and seven days with 1,000 free requests for the scraping API, allowing you to test performance with zero friction. The platform's intuitive dashboard, plug-and-play scraping templates, and extensive documentation make it ideal for both technical and non-technical users. 
If you need help, 24-7 technical support is always just a click away. At the heart of Decodo's infrastructure is a massive network of 125 million ethically sourced residential IPs across over 195 global locations. These proxies mimic real user traffic, letting you access virtually any site without getting blocked, throttled, or flagged. Combined with a robust infrastructure, Decodo offers industry-leading success rates, fast response times, and a resilient scraping engine that's production-ready from day one. For data engineers and AI teams, your data pipelines are only as reliable as their sources. When an ETL or ELT job fails because a website blocked your server or changed its layout, your downstream models and dashboards become stale. Decodo's Universal Scraping API acts as a durable, managed data source. It abstracts away the fragility of individual websites, handling bot detection and site changes for you. This means you can build more resilient data pipelines that require less maintenance, ensuring your data lakes and vector databases are constantly fed with fresh, high-quality data for training and RAG systems. For data analysts, your insights are often limited by the columns in your CSV or database table. Imagine you have a list of sales leads. With a simple Python script using Pandas and Decodo's API, you can enrich that in minutes. For each company, you can automatically pull in their industry, employee account from LinkedIn, and recent news from financial sites. This transforms a flat list into a rich data set, allowing you to build far more powerful models and dashboards in Tableau or Power BI to identify your true ideal customer profile. And for software engineers and QA teams, flaky end-to-end -end tests are a nightmare. Stop debugging test failures caused by your CICD runner's IP getting rate limited or banned by a third-party API you integrate with. By routing your Playwright or Selenium tests through Dakota's network, you can ensure reliable testing of geo-specific features, verify localization by seeing your app from anywhere in the world, let's say Japan, London, or New York, and even perform realistic load testing that simulates traffic from thousands of unique users, not just a single server. Decodo is also surprisingly affordable, with some of the best pricing among premium proxy providers, a pay-as-you-go model, and a 14-day refund policy. You can scale your usage flexibly and with full confidence. Whether you're scraping a few pages a week or orchestrating thousands of concurrent requests, Decodo adapts to your needs without locking you into long-term commitments or overbuilt enterprise contracts. I would recommend that you use the link in the description or pinned comment to try Decodo today and get an exclusive 35% discount on your plan. How about transparent versus anonymous versus elite proxies? A transparent proxy doesn't hide the fact that it's a proxy and passes along the original client IP address. These are often used for passive monitoring access control or caching in schools and offices. Users usually don't know that one is being used. An anonymous proxy does mask your original IP address but still reveals that it is a proxy. The server knows the request is coming through a proxy but not who sent it. And finally, an elite proxy, also called a high anonymity proxy, hides both your IP and the fact that a proxy is being used at all. These are ideal for users who want to bypass anti-proxy measures such as those used by e-commerce platforms or government censorship tools. How about residential versus data center proxies? A residential proxy routes your internet traffic through an IP address assigned to a real physical device by an internet service provider or ISP. These IPs belong to actual households or businesses. As a result, residential proxies appear like genuine human users to websites. This makes them extremely useful in cases where stealth is important, like avoiding bans on web scraping, automating tasks on retail sites, or testing location-specific experiences. A data center proxy, on the other hand, is hosted on cloud infrastructure like AWS or DigitalOcean. These IPs are not tied to consumer ISP or real-world devices. They come from server farms and are easy to detect via IP reputation databases. They're significantly faster and cheaper and they work well for high throughput tasks that don't require stealth. However, many websites and services block data center IPs by default due to their association with bots and scrapers. Think of it like this. Residential equals real people on real devices and data center equals machines in server rooms. Okay, now what is SSL interception? Normally, when you access a website using HTTPS, like HTTPS example your browser performs a TLS handshake directly with the website server. This handshake establishes a secure encrypted connection between your browser and the site, meaning no one in the middle not even your ISP or network admin can see the actual contents of your traffic. This is what makes HTTPS secure. However, SSL interception breaks that direct chain. It happens when a proxy server pretends to be the destination website to your browser, and it pretends to be your browser to the destination website. This allows it to sit in the middle and decrypt, inspect, and possibly modify the contents of your HTTPS traffic. Okay, but how can a proxy decrypt your HTTPS traffic? The proxy has its own root certificate authority, or CA. This is a special certificate 
certificate that allows it to issue trusted certificates for any domain. The proxy intercepts your HTTPS request, such as when your browser says connect example.com. When your browser expects a certificate from example.com, the proxy forges a fake certificate for that domain on the fly signed by the proxy's root CA or certificate authority. If your system trusts this CA because it was pre-installed on your device by your company, your browser won't raise any warnings. Now the proxy can decrypt all the data you send and receive, log it, filter it, scan it for malware, enforce policies, and then re-encrypt it before passing it along to the actual website. From your browser's point of view, everything still looks like it's securely talking to example.com, but in reality, you're encrypted with the proxy and the proxy is encrypted with the real website, and it's sitting in between, able to read everything in clear text. When such SSL interception isn't done, proxies handle HTTPS traffic using the connect method. This is an HTTP command that sets up a raw TCP tunnel from the client to the target server, allowing encrypted traffic to just pass through without inspection. The proxy in this case acts like a bridge, but doesn't see the contents. If you learned something new in this video, feel free to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel for more future updates. Also, be sure to check out my recommendations in the pinned comment and description. Codecrafters, if you want to learn how to build Docker, a compiler, or Redis from scratch, and Decodo as an excellent advanced proxy solution.